Hey everyone, welcome to Cross the Ditch and See. My name is Laura and I'm so glad you're here today. Why don't you come help me plant the garden? I am working hard to get our summer garden going. I have some flowers that I have started, zinnias, marigolds, and daisies that I have started in our house. And now I am going to transplant them out to the garden because I feel confident that all threat of frost has passed. It is the first week of May. We are two and a half, almost three weeks. Hair's getting in my face. Uh, two and a half, three weeks past our estimated last frost date. We did have a late frost last week, but our 10 day forecast is showing very warm temperatures. So I feel confident in starting to plant out some more of these frost tender plants. So I wanted to take you along. I wanna give you a quick status update of the garden. Um, I have some kohlrabi planted out here, squash and zucchini. I have some eggplants, uh, ground cherries. There's a few cabbages back there. I was a little late getting these in. They were already started, but I was a little late getting them transferred out. The cabbages and the kohlrabi. So I don't know that they'll actually produce anything before they bolt. But I didn't want to toss the seedlings in the compost, so I said, let's give it a try. Why not? I also have a couple of little sunflowers popping up in the corners. Try to get my focus back on right there, that little guy. Um, I have apocalypse scorpion peppers. I had two other peppers out here, but me being the little bit of the rebel that I am and trying to plant stuff out earlier than I should, I lost two of my peppers in the uh, frost. I did have them covered, but I just, they just didn't last very long. So I'm hoping this guy uh, holds on. I'm gonna interplant some more peppers into this bed. This whole bed's gonna be a, a, pepper, a pepper bed once I get it amended. So over here, I have some more um, purple cauliflower planted, which is similar to what is planted right here. I think I have snowball and purple cauliflower planted right there. Um, those are starting to produce, it's getting kind of hot, so the heads that they're producing are pretty little. Also, my husband mowed the garden and it looks so much better in here. Yeah, I think it's getting a little too hot, so I do not know what we'll get out of these, but I'm willing to try. There's some cauliflower right there. Butterflies, sugar peas. Sugar peas are doing really well. We got a good harvest out of them the other day and put them on a fresh salad and it was awesome. My Gerber daisies coming up. Carrots are growing right along. There's a lot of weeds in here. <laughs> I gotta pull weeds. Radish, these are some radish that went to seed. So I'm gonna let them stay like that. Radish produce little seed pods and you can eat those little seed pods and they're really good. So um, I'm going to let those go to seed so I can save some seed and harvest some of those seed pods. Um, broccoli has gone to seed. As you can tell, I've already started pulling some, but I'm going to leave some of this here to finish drying out so I can harvest some seed. Those have already popped open. Lots of carrots. I got to get out here and harvest these carrots great thing about it in the garden if you want a snack you can just reach over and have you a snack delicious if you've never seen a carrot flower now you have so those carrots have gone to seed a lot of these carrots are probably ready to be pulled so I'm gonna need to get in here and get to pulling them here soon. I love these little carrots. We had these on our salad the other night with the sugar peas and they were absolutely delicious. So I will get out here and pull quite a few of these here in just a little bit. It's so hard when you get started pulling them. You just want to start pulling all of them. All right, I'm going to leave them alone for right now. My artichoke i need to get this planted in the ground it overwintered in that pot it is very thirsty right now because it's very hot outside so we'll get that guy in the ground soon 
sugar peas, more sugar peas, and lettuce. Sorry. Walking in the garden, you get stuff stuck on your feet and it hurts sometimes. Lots of lettuce, lettuce, lettuce. More sugar peas. Spinach that has gone to seed. So we'll pull that. Calendula. Beautiful flower. Just beautiful. Some bok choy. And the rest of the beds just lettuce and some more radish. Over here, I have peppers planted. These are all jalapeno peppers. Well, no, I've got a couple pepperoncinis in here. So I'm going to get these guys watered because they look thirsty. A couple of cucumbers planted out already. This bed needs a lot of attention, <laughs> but my purple cabbage is still growing. So I'm gonna let it keep going until hopefully we can get a little bit of a harvest off of it. So I just love the color though. That is so pretty to me. And an angry wasp. And I have an onion here that overwintered and is now developing a little flower to get seed out of. So we might give that one a try to, to harvest some seed from. But back to actually planting the garden. You've seen I've already got some things planted, but I do want to get some flowers planted in here because I want to attract those pollinators to my garden. That way, when my squash and zucchini, cucumbers, things like that, start putting out their flower blossoms, the pollinators are already know that this is a great place to go to get some sweetness and they'll come in here to pollinate my plants and, uh, and spread the love, you could say. Plus, I mean, flowers, they're pretty. So here I have some zinnias that I started inside. And really, I think all I'm really gonna do is just kind of go around the garden and plant a couple here and there all about the place. These two beds that still need a lot of attention, I'm not gonna plant any in there right now, but where my lettuces and things like that are growing and then these two beds right here, I'll go ahead and plant some in there as well. I think one thing I'm gonna do to kind of make planting easy is on these beds, my really long beds, where the wood is at to kind of brace them. Um, I'm gonna plant some flowers, like a little line of flowers right there. It also helps serve as like a natural little divide for other things that I decide to put in the garden as well. But these are my zinnias. Just gonna put two right here. And these little um, plastic little seed packs that they're in, or seed starting packs, these are ones that I have saved for years. After buying plants, uh, friends have brought me some, or if I've seen like neighbors and stuff who have thrown some on the side of the road, I don't hesitate to stop and grab these because you can reuse these for years and years and years. It helps to recycle them. Plus it keeps you from having to spend money on buying these to start seed with. So don't hesitate to pick some up on the side of the road if you see some or ask friends and family to save theirs for you. But I've got two zinnias planted here. I have a pine tree growing in here. I'm gonna have to pull that out. I don't think this bed will support a pine tree. And I'm just gonna go around the garden and plant some more. I got flowers planted. Unfortunately, I also got eat up by fire ants. Apparently, I have a family of fire ants living in my pepper bed. How ironic, fire ants in the pepper bed. So, we're gonna have to figure out a way to eradicate them. I try not to use chemicals in my garden. I try to use um, as organic as possible means of controlling pests. However, fire ants, I have yet to find a way to do that. 
So I'll have to get, ask my husband very politely if he'll come out here and take care of them for me. Um, I blister really bad when I get bit by fire ants. So that is not fun. I definitely want to get them out of the garden. But got flowers planted. I'm going to throw some more peppers in the bed. And I have a couple of more squash and zucchini and some cucumbers that I'm going to put out here. And then let's see. Oh, yeah. Get my marigolds planted and try to avoid getting attacked by fire ants again. So the main thing I'm going to plant in my garden today, I'm going to plant more peppers. Um, here I have Mama Rosa, Jalapeno, some more pepper and sinis. Um, I have some more zinnias in here as well. And I think I have some shishito peppers. So I'm going to get these planted out in the garden. I'm going to put it over there in that bed where the rest of my peppers are planted at. And I'm going to try to avoid the end there where fire ants are at until I can get that handled. So we're gonna get these planted out. I'm gonna go really quick. So I'm gonna put you on a time lapse, but just remember planting peppers, you want to plant them. When you go plant them in the ground, you want to bury them just to the level of the soil in the container. You can come up just a little bit above that level, but not much. Just give them a good plant in the ground about that deep. Also, keep in mind that when you're planting your peppers out, if you notice anything like this on it, these little flower buds popping up, a lot of people will buy plants at stores and go, yay, they're already flowering out. You know, I'll have vegetables sooner. Well, when you are transplanting your vegetables into your garden, whether you're doing containers or you're doing into a garden bed, yeah, it's awesome that they're starting to flower out, but when they're going from from the small little pots that they're in now to a, a larger container or to your flower bed, you don't want them flowering out immediately. For that first week or so, you want to break off any flower buds that begin to develop. So your plant will focus its energy on growing roots and not the actual fruit itself. So when I plant these out in my garden for the first week or so, I'm gonna come through and any of these little flower buds that, you, that I see growing, I'm just gonna break them off and toss them to the side. Once again, I do this so in the end, I'll actually have a bigger and healthier plant. I think I've broken the buds off of most of these, but I do this because I want a bigger, healthier plant and in turn, I'll actually have a bigger production. I know it sounds counterproductive to break off the blossoms because the blossoms are where the fruit grows. But trust me in saying that if you do that, you'll have a bigger plant and you'll end up having more peppers when you do that. Same goes for when you're transplanting like squash, watermelon, zucchini, your eggplant. I've uh, broken off a lot of buds off of those ground cherries all of those I've been breaking the flower buds off of for the past week and I have noticed my plants growing significantly faster now that they are focusing their energy on establishing those roots instead of growing the fruit so I'll continue doing that on these plants for a few more days these I'll do it for the next week or so that way we'll get a good root system established that way I'll have a bigger stronger plant and in the end have more fruit so just a tip, when you are transplanting out things into containers and gardens, plant starts that you may have bought at a nursery or at a store, you want to do that just so you'll have a, a stronger plant in the end. So I'm gonna put you on a time lapse while I go plant out my peppers over here. And I really want to get these peppers planted out quickly because I'm gonna give them a drink of water tonight once I get them planted. But we have a really good chance of rain here tomorrow. And if it's your first time gardening, know this. First of all, sorry for the weird camera movement. I'm talking while trying to get my camera set up, secured to the fence while I, so you can see me plant. But um, you may notice that your garden, when watering with a water hose, it grows. But there's something about when your garden is watered with rain, it is like the garden just explodes with growth 
overnight. So I wanna get these pepper plants in the ground as well as a few other things. So I can give them a drink of water to get them through the night. And tomorrow when we have that good, good God-given rain that my garden can thrive and explode off of that rain. So here, I'm gonna transfer you over to the time-lapse. So I got these shishito peppers, the Mama Rosa peppers, and a few jalapenos planted. I have several left. I, I even have more up front. And the reason I'm planting so many jalapeno peppers is because last year I made cowboy candy and it was such a huge hit that I said I was gonna plant tons of jalapenos this year with the hopes of having a huge jalapeno harvest so I can make a lot of cowboy candy because we have been really like rationing it to, to save the few jars that we have left to enjoy but I'm gonna up the ante this year and plant a lot more. So over here in this bed that I need to clean out and I'm in the soil, I'm gonna plant the rest of my peppers here and uh, I'm gonna let that cabbage finish growing. Hopefully, if it starts to bolt, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it so I can utilize this bed. But I'm gonna clean out this bed and I'm gonna plant the rest of my jalapeno peppers in this bed and then I'll keep cucumbers climbing up this cattle panel on both sides and then I've got to decide what I want growing up this cattle panel and that one I'm also going to put in a new cattle panel going from that bed to that bed stay tuned for a future video on that because it is a cheap and easy way to trellis um, things like cucumbers beans and um, smaller melons like cantaloupe and kajari melons um, have them grow up instead of growing out and that way you can utilize more space in your garden. So just stay tuned for that video in the future, in the very near future. But yeah, so next up, cleaning out this bed. I'm in, in the soil. I'm gonna add some soil to it and get uh, the rest of my peppers planted. jalapeno peppers and some calendula planted out right here took a total of maybe 10 minutes to do all that I'm gonna come in and add a little bit of granulated fertilizer and work it into the soil but other than that that soil should be good to go I'm just gonna give these guys a drink of water before I go in for the night but I got a bed and a half of peppers planted it's not too bad for a quick ousting in the garden on the afternoon well I'm starting to lose sunlight and I need to get inside and cook supper, but just wanted to share with you the starting of the uh, summer garden. So I haven't videoed everything. It's kind of one of those things when I have a few minutes here and there, I come outside and I plant. That's kind of what I do. I don't have like super, super amounts of dedicated time to come out here and work. So I just do a little bit here and there. So that's how you can garden, you know, outside of your full-time job. But any hoot, thank you for joining me. I will try to bring you along on future garden plantings. I'm gonna to try to get some more um, uh, cucumbers out here. And then I'm also gonna work down the side of my house to finish planting the tomatoes and get some watermelon planted out. I'm gonna get some more lettuce planted, a few other little things. And then in a few weeks, I will be, well, probably in another week or so, I'll be getting my okra and green beans planted out. And once the sugar peas finish producing on the trellis behind me, I will be planting pole beans to go up those trellis. They do really well in this garden. So excited to have those again this year. Well, got my peppers planted. I'm gonna go in and cook supper. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you come back to see me again.